Welcome to Adam's Gardening Guides. I'm Adam Pascoe and this is my garden here in the East Midlands in the United Kingdom. Today we're looking at the winter garden. What's looking its best and the jobs you can be getting on with to keep your garden on track for the summer months ahead. The snowdrops are starting to bloom. My earliest camellia is just starting to open. The skimmier buds are developing and will be bursting into bloom very soon. And these skimmiers like Cabela really do brighten up your autumn pots, along with one of my favourite evergreen perennials, the lovely Euphorbia ascot rainbow, with its beautiful variegated leaf, which is perfect for both borders and winter pots. Coming up, give your clematis that annual prune. Cut down the tops of hardy perennials, clearing away all the debris. It's time to prune your buddleia to control the size and shape of your shrub. Protect tender plants in your borders with cloches. Insulate your garden taps to prevent frost damage. Help the bird feeders to make sure they have water and food for the winter. And perhaps take a few hardwood cuttings and much more besides. So stick with me, lots to cover in this video today. Lots of leaves have fallen into my garden over the winter months, onto my patio and around my borders. And these need to be collected to clear them off the plants before I can prune them back. Earlier in the autumn, my silver birch lost its leaves. Quite early on, they fell onto my lawn and I was able to collect those up by setting my mower blades high, wheeling it up and down the lawn to pick them up, shred them up, and then I packed the leaves into bags and tied up the tops, stacked them away so that the leaves would rot down and turn into leaf mould. These leaves I'm collecting now over my borders, particularly the oak leaves that have fallen down from my neighbour's tree, they'll be picked up and I'll either tip some of them into the compost bin or pack some of them into bags and let them compost down. So start by clearing up all those leaves. Now I've cleared the decks, I can see the pruning which needs to be done. And it's these herbaceous perennials, the hardy perennials I'm going to prune first, like this peony. This one is Bowl of Beauty. And all of the stems that grew up last year can be cut down right down to soil level, removing all those old stemmy growths. The plant supports which are in place can be removed too, but I'll put these back over the peonies before they start growing later in spring. So cut all of those away down to ground level. Another hardy perennial I adore is Helianthus Lemon Queen. Beautiful daisy-like flowers that form in the summer. But now is the time to prune them, cutting all of the stems down, again, down to soil level. Clear away all the growth, clear the decks, and make room for new growth to develop. The cranes bills or hardy geraniums can be cleared away too, just snipping off all of the shoots that developed last year. Pull them all away, clear them away. Also tease away any of this perennial growth which is growing around the spring flowering bulbs which have just started poking their heads up through the borders. In this bed I've got some alliums, some crocus and some narcissus. So what I want to do is to cut down all the perennials, clear away all the old growth, collect all of those autumn leaves and clear the way for the spring bulbs to develop. Then I'm going to spread a mulch over the border as well. This is a really good time of year for mulching your borders because you can sprinkle the mulch material, maybe it's some old compost or some peat-free compost or some farmyard manure, just sprinkle it on over your borders so that the new growth this spring will grow up through that mulch and the worms will work the mulch down into the soil too, helping to improve and condition your soil. This peony is Sarah Bernhardt and again, I can remove the old growing support frame and cut off the peony stems right the way off at soil level. One of my favourite clematis is Dr. Rupal, which I've planted at the base of a pear tree and train it up into the branches to layer on some extra colour through the summer. Now if I leave this growth of Dr. Rupal, you can see already end of winter I've got new shoots, these green shoots developing high up. But if I leave this unpruned, the clematis is just going to get taller and taller, very leggy, flowers at the top and nothing at the bottom. 
what you've got to do with summer flowering clematis is to follow these shoots down which developed last year although they've got shoots on them I'm going to have to prune these away because I want to follow them down low down really as low down on the plant as you can to where there are some green shoots or some buds growing at the bottom so really any time through winter up until the end of February it's a good time to check these clematis and see where you can prune them down to so all of this top growth can come away if I leave this in place the plant will get very leggy so start by just removing as much of this leggy top growth as you can which is grown right up into the branches of my pear tree so get rid of all of this cut it down completely and then once you've cleared the decks we can actually work out where we can prune down to so now with a lot of the top growth cut away just follow those stems down and just find where there's some buds growing out from the shoot and prune above those remove all the top growth and cut down some some low buds they could be two foot from soil level a foot from soil level or even lower down but just follow all of that growth down and cut just above where there's some new green buds developing so like here on the clematis growth is coming up and a couple of foot from soil level I've got the old stem that grew last year these lovely new fat buds so I can trim away the old growth just above there cut that away and these buds will grow out this year and they will give me the shoots which will carry flowers later this summer so you don't have to be too precise but here we are down at ground level for the stems up and as soon as you find some low buds try and cut down to the buds as low down on the plant as possible any of these low buds will be great it means that the new growth will be coming out from the base and growing up into the branches of my pear tree Clematis arabella is a non-climbing clematis so you'll need to give some support to you could just grow it in a board and let it clamber over the other plants I put this metal obelisk support in here and what I want to do is to encourage new growth from the bottom not high up so I can already see high up on these old stems some green shoots starting to form so even in winter I think it's time to literally give this quite a good cut down cutting it down to you know, maybe 10 inches a foot from soil level sometimes even more what I don't want is all of this new growth to stay in place and get new shoots developing higher up otherwise the plant will take off and get into my neighbor's garden so I'm going to cut all of this away because I want the new shoots to develop low down on the stems to grow up this support through the growing season and then put a good flowering display onto this obelisk to enjoy through the summer so now is the time to cut away all of this growth to avoid it wasting energy forming shoots higher up my clematis viticella etoile rose flowers around about july onwards it's a slightly later flowering smaller flowered clematis it's grown up and it's grown behind the hydrangea just training itself into the holly hedge beyond and the easy way to prune all of these clematis viticellas is simple you cut them off a ground level all of this growth grew up last year from the bottom all of it is cut away now and you can do that anytime during winter new growth will come up from the base in the spring and this will gradually twine its way through I just push it into the support so that it clings on to the holly at the back and lays on some extra color through the year so all I'm going to do now is to cut it off chop it away right down at the bottom just a inch or so from soil level is absolutely fine and now all of this growth can be taken away because none of this will carry flowers this year all of this can come away it's all dead and once the new shoots come up in the spring I'll train those into place I really hope you're enjoying this video and if you are please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel thank you winter is the time to prune your budlier 
or butterfly bush and this is a buddleia called nanoensis and it's called nano blue you'll get lots of tall new growth which comes up in a season so your job for pruning is to get rid of last year's growth follow it down and cut back to its base because you'll get new shoots developing at the base and these will grow up and carry flowers this year so just follow all of these stems down just to where some buds are low down on the stem all of last year's growth can be pruned away and this makes room for the new growth to develop looks like it's a bit ruthless but this is exactly what you need to do if you leave these old stems in place all you're going to get is very top heavy old growth developing up and your plants will get straggly and really not perform that well so cut off the growth and what I'm going to do is to prune some shoots down to this stubby base some of it shorter some of it longer and then you'll get new growth developing in tiers which means that your flowering display will also be developing in tiers to give you a really good summer flowering performance I really hope you're enjoying this video and if you are please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel thank you any old woody bits like this have died back they didn't produce any new growth last year so I'm going to remove these completely just cut back flush to the old stem and remove this old woody growth continue working around your shrub following all these old stems so a stem like this all of this growth can be cut back just come back to some lower buds and these will sprout out and grow I know it looks quite ruthless but this is exactly what you need to do to control the growth of your buddleia you get very top heavy if you don't remove them so every stem follow it back find some new buds at the base of the stem just cut beyond those and this is a really good good way to rejuvenate the shrub and ensure that the flowering performance will be good over the summer months there you have it just go over it again if you see any little old woody bits which can be cut back just snip those back in order but there you have it all the shoots cut back down and now we'll get new growth developing from here so within a few months by the time we get through spring you're going to have lovely new leafy growth lots of new shoots have developed and as we move into summer those shoots will be carrying flowers and you'll have a beautiful display of blooms to bring the butterflies and bees into your garden if you want some winter fragrance then look no further than Daphne Jacqueline Postil this hardy semi-evergreen shrub has an upright habit and it can grow to about three or four meters in height but over several years so it can get to quite a size in time and it's impressive enough to have received an award of garden merit from the Royal Horticultural Society. It prefers a sunny but sheltered position and produces these lovely pink scented flowers right in the middle of winter and on a warm sunny January day I've even spotted bees feeding from their open blooms. The dwarf compact dogwood Cornus Kelsey's gold produces a lovely dome of golden leaves to enjoy throughout the growing season. I've enjoyed the stems during the winter month but now I'm going to cut all of these back to the woody base just leaving those base stems about a foot or so high cut all of those shoots away because what I'm trying to do is to encourage new growth to come up in the spring which will carry those beautiful golden leaves right the way through the summer and into the autumn these stems needn't be wasted though I can take them down my plot and I'll use these as hardwood cuttings just making a slit in the soil and pushing the stems down to about half the depth into the soil firming the soil around the base watering well keeping the water through the growing season and a proportion of these will root and grow out and I'll develop some new plants for free one of the earliest crocus to flower in my garden is crocus thomasinianus with beautiful silvery purple petals and golden stamen these bulbs were planted several years ago so my established clump has gradually grown bigger by the year 
I've also planted the lovely crocus tricolour in my lawn and these dainty little flowers pop up through the grass during February to add colour and remind me that spring is just around the corner. These early crocus are not just good in pots and borders to provide some welcome winter colour, but they'll also provide food for early flying bees, like here on Crocus Pickwick. Golden Hop is one of my favourite fast growing hardy perennial climbers, but winter is the time to prune it. I enjoyed the golden foliage last year. Now I'm going to prune away all of last year's growth, which has died back. I've grown it up, this pergola arch in my garden, and I just need to untangle the stems now, just chop and pull and gently remove all of last year's old woody stems from the pergola arch. Take them off the top, just tease them out of the side, chop them all back, and I'm going to cut them right the way down to soil level. New growth will come up in the spring, but all of this old growth from last year needs to be removed completely. Then once it's gone, there's space for the new shoots to start coming up in the spring and they'll grow up the trellis panels on the side of my archway up and over the top and give me a beautiful foil of golden foliage right the way through the first part of the year. It turns a little bit greener as we move through into autumn but it's a wonderful fast growing perennial climbing plant. The hellebores are starting to flower and if you want you can cut away some of the older leaves to make room for the new growth around. So just trim off the old foliage from your hellebores and you can see here I've got new growth and flowers coming up. So if you prune these away you'll tidy up the display in the bed and actually allow the flowers on the hellebores to be seen in their full glory. So I'll go away trimming that off there now. And the other thing I'm going to cut off is these old stems here. I've got Solomon Seal Polygonatum growing up at the back of the bed, arch open beautifully over the hellebores and the plants at the front. But all these old stems can be taken off or cut away now. It's got a, like a rhizome underneath the soil. That will grow up again this spring. But I want to tidy the beds now just to make a nicer, more attractive display to enjoy through the rest of winter. And some of these hellebore leaves can actually carry disease over from one season to the next. So if during winter you just carefully go around your hellebores and cut off the old foliage, mine the new shoots, take care not to damage these new shoots which are coming through. But that just means that hopefully any disease on them won't be carried over from one season to the next. So slowly get round your borders and get rid of all the old leaves. I've actually found a little ladybird overwintering in here now. i leave him out here and he'll hopefully start eating aphids in the spring, lay eggs, breed and carry on for future generations of ladybirds in my borders. And remember to keep the blades of your secateurs as sharp as possible. I've got one of these little sharpening tools which has got an abrasive surface on it. So after I've used them every day I will just gently sharpen up and hone up the blade of the secateur so that it is sharp and ready to use again just keeps the blade really sharp. So I'm out in the garden pruning. I'm sure of a really clean cut every time. My winter flowering viburnum gives you some colour at the back of this border. Eve Price, large growing evergreen shrub. You can easily prune it and cut it down to size, giving me some winter flower, evergreen foliage. But in this area at the bottom, which is in the shade, if I just pull back, of this big tall silver birch tree. I've got a dry shady border, the roots of the silver birch go into the border as well and I want some ground cover and I've planted the barren wort, Epimedium. This is Epimedium fraunleiten 
it has an evergreen leaf. It's only grown to about a foot or so in height. Um, what I'm going to do in a minute is prune it, but the new foliage is a gorgeous colour, turns green as you go through the year, and it stays this carpet of green foliage right the way through the growing season. So if you've got a dry shady spot or a shady border, epimediums are a good choice, but winter is the time to prune. You want to prune this in winter before the new growth and the flowers develop. So January time is great for pruning up a medium. I just use the shears and cut away all of the leaves at ground level. Just cut everything off just above soil level. You can clear all of this old foliage away. That's all you need to do just once a year. It loves dry shade grows really well, very trouble free, good for banks, dry borders if you've got something. Get some morning sun, otherwise it's quite shady here as well. Cut away all of this foliage and then in the spring you'll get new leaves and flowers develop giving you a lovely display of golden epimedium flowers. There's other colours available too. And this is a great early flowering ground cover plant which leaves the evergreen leaves to provide some interest right the way through the year. I grow lots of hostas in pots because I love their leaves providing interest on the patios throughout the summer. But then I've moved my pots to the back of my pergola arch for the winter. The leaves have all died down and now it's time to just clean all of this growth away. It's all died back down now. These are completely hardy perennials. So all of this growth has died away. And in the spring, the new shoots will develop up. If it's a very congested hosta, then I might lift and divide them. And you'll find a video on my channel that shows you how to divide congested hostas. But in the winter, it's just time to clear away all of this whole growth and new shoots will soon be emerging in here and we'll see those in the spring. Ornamental grasses need pruning in winter before they start growing. So don't delay pruning things like the Japanese bloodgrass, Imperata rubra, that forms a lovely pot plant with its beautiful red stems and leaves. Or Miscanthus, lots of varieties of the Miscanthus sabrinus, which will grow well in ornamental pots. These need to be pruned in winter too. And the way to prune them is to cut all of this growth that developed last year right down to its base. So all of these stems can be cut off just above compost level if they're in a pot or soil level if they're in a border. Cut all of this growth away and this clears the decks, getting rid of last year's growth. And you'll notice through to the end of winter, into the beginning of spring, you'll start getting some new shoots. There's a few slightly greeny bits already at the base of some of these shoots. But what you don't want to do is to delay. If you delay pruning, you'll have new shoots coming up through this old growth which makes pruning a really tricky job, trying to cut out the old and not damage the new. So there we are, a few little new fronds already developing. That's pruned. The same with Imperata, the Japanese bloodgrass, whether it's in pots or borders, cut away all of last year's growth and you will be getting new shoots developing in the spring to give you this wonderful display of red leaves to enjoy right the way through summer. It's lovely having some early colour in your garden. My Camellia Garden Glory is the earliest of my camellias to start flowering end of January into February. Beautiful pink flowers. But if you've got any early flowering shrubs or you've got some fruit trees like plums which bloom early in spring, then these flowers 
can be very susceptible to frost damage. If the days are mild and the nights are mild, then no problems at all. But if frost is forecast, then the blooms on my camellias or the blossom on your fruit trees can be damaged and killed by cold and frost. And this would really mark the flowers and bring the flowering display to an end. So what should you do? Get yourself some sheets of garden fleece. Now, not all fleece is the same. This is quite a robust one. You'll find that if you look online and you're buying it, you'll find different weights or qualities of fleece. This is a 50 gram weight one. So it's quite thick and I hope it will last for many years. And what I do if frost is forecast is I will completely cover right over the top and up the sides of my camellia. I can hold it in place actually using just some clothes pegs or something like that to clip it around and hold it over the top of my camellia. And by putting this on at night, hopefully it will provide some double insulation, stops the frost from reaching the blooms. And in the morning, I can take the whole piece away once the weather has warmed up and enjoy the flowering display. So keep some fleece handy to protect some of your tender plants through winter. If you've got a store of plant pots and saucers, then use the opportunity in winter to give them a thorough clean and a scrub. You can just put a little bit of disinfectant into a bucket of water, scrub them clean, and then these will be ready for planting with your veg and your crops and your flowers next summer. How about these for unusual winter flowers? Witch hazel produces these intriguing wispy flowers on bare stems through winter. There are varieties with golden flowers like palida or others in orange and other shades. These flowers are sweetly scented too. New leaves develop in spring and hamamelis produces a great display of autumn foliage colour too. Some plants, even though they're nearly hardy, really benefit for some winter protection. And my little eriostomon here, I think they call it the gin and tonic plant, can be hardy down to about minus four or five degrees, but I don't want to risk it. I'm not going to let it be hurt by frost. So what I've done is to put one of my cloches over the top to give it some extra protection from cold through the winter. It, it's just going to keep the worst of the frost off. So hopefully, once the weather warms up in spring, I can remove this cloche completely and enjoy this beautiful variegated foliage of flowers through the rest of the year. Winter flowering bedding, like pansies, can provide some extra colour, particularly grown here around this variegated yucca plant. But pansies and violas need deadheading regularly, so as soon as the flowers are over, just pick off these old flowers to stop the plants making seed heads, which can bring their flowering season to an end. So every few weeks, just go over your pansies and violas and pick off the old seed heads to encourage new flowers to develop over the coming weeks. As far as hydrangeas in winter are concerned, I leave these old flower heads in place throughout the winter. I won't cut these away until much closer to spring. They just give a little bit of protection to the shoots and the new buds below. So leave the heads on your mop head and lace cap hydrangeas. And then when it comes to springtime, probably March into April time, I'll follow these down and I'll prune above some buds which are fattening up and swelling up nicely now but if you prune too early you'll get new growth and that new growth can be damaged by frost so delay pruning until the spring and leave this in the winter come back to it later in spring for something a bit different check out garia elliptica james roof that carries its impressive hanging tassels through winter there's nothing quite like it, and it made an impression on me from the very first moment I set eyes on it. Garia is an evergreen shrub too, perfect for training up walls or fences to screen them from view and soften your outlook. 
and get a mulch around my roses too. They can be given a little bit of a light trim or prune during winter, but probably I'll wait until about March time to give them their full prune. But now you can mulch, just putting some compost, some charm of manure, something like that around the base of the roses. Cover the soil surface up, let the worms work that compost in, improves your soil, increases its organic content, and also helps to smother some of the annual weed seeds which might otherwise be germinating and growing up in your borders. If you've got a more natural woodland area in your garden, perhaps beside under some deciduous trees, then a carpet of golden winter aconites could be just the thing to bring colour to an area on these cold, dull winter days. And there are other early bulbs you could plant, like snowdrops, that will grow into bigger clumps and spread once they're established. And another early bulb I've seen coming into flower during February is the unusual Fritillaria radiana, which grows to about two foot in height and it's fully hardy and it naturalizes well. I've just left these old flower stems on to enjoy through the winter, but as we get through to the end of winter, beginning of spring, you notice if you look down at the base of your seed and plants, you can already see some new shoots growing like on this lovely variegated variety called Lanchos. And now it's time to just remove these old stems. You need to prune them away at the bottom and then they will make way for the new growth which is developing. So just get down low down on the stems, cut away the old flower stems and you will reveal the new shoots just developing which will grow up in the spring, produce a lovely display of leaves and then late summer into autumn give you a nice display of flowers too. Strawberries need to be given a trim in winter. I've grown mine outdoors in a strawberry bed and I cut all of the old leaves back to the crown. Literally snip over, you can use shears, you can use secateurs, clear away any old leaves, debris, fallen autumn leaves, cut back any old runners, cut back just to leave the crown. So really tidy up the strawberry bed. That removes any debris and possibly any overwintering pests on the bed itself. And in the crown of the strawberry, because that's now exposed to the cold and a winter cold, that helps the new flower buds develop deep in the strawberry crown. Those buds will develop into flowers and fruits later this year. And you'll notice my strawberry bed is covered with one of these woven fabric mulches. I've planted the strawberries through that. They come up through and this helps to cut down on weeds, lets the water through, lets the air through, but stops the weeds growing up. And as the strawberry fruits develop, they don't lie on dirty soil. They're much cleaner and easier to pick. And if you'd like to find out more about planting up a strawberry bed or even growing strawberries in pots, perhaps in your greenhouse, check out the videos on my YouTube channel at Adams Gardening Guides. Over 50 gardening videos there for you to enjoy, so do check those out. Don't forget to protect your outside taps from cold and frost during the winter. So I remove any attachments I've got to the tap. This tap is attached goes into my kitchen and I'm going to, instead I've turned the water off inside the house, I'm going to open the tap itself so no water is flooding through but I've released the pressure and now I'm going to insulate it. I'm going to wrap this bubble polythene insulation right the way around the metal of the tap because I don't want the frost to penetrate and I don't want the pipes to freeze and crack. So wrap it up well with bubble polythene. Then you can secure it with some string or some wire to hold that in place. And that will just stop any frost getting in. It will stop my water pipes from freezing in the winter. Just check that's in place, particularly during cold frosty weather. I use dozens of plant labels every year, but I want to recycle them clean them to use another year. I use some of this paste cleaner, which is slightly abrasive. Just put some of this onto a sponge and then you can rub it over 
your plant labels to clean off last year's name so that they're ready to use. Just a few more to go. If you had a bird nesting box up last year, which the birds use for nesting, have you taken it down and cleaned it out yet? Well, if not, take that box down right away and empty it out, clean out the old bird nesting material, sterilize the inside of the box by pouring in some boiling water, let it dry thoroughly, and then put it back in the tree. Birds will soon be exploring to find a nesting site for this spring. I've already had blue tits exploring my homemade box early in January and through into February. So get your bird nesting boxes cleaned out if they've been used before, get them up in the tree. If you haven't got one, buy one. Put up a bird nesting box and hopefully you'll have birds nesting in your garden this year. Your garden birds also need a supply of water. So I've got a bird bath in my garden, but on a cold, frosty morning, you can get ice forming in your bird bath. And also the leaves fall in and a bird bath needs regularly cleaning. So I'll tip out any old water. And I regularly use just a kettle of boiled water to put into the bird bath, give it a jolly good thorough scrub and a wash. Get rid of that old water. We'll do that again, just really make sure it's properly clean. So when the birds are drinking, they're not going to be spreading any diseases from one bird to another. Thoroughly keep your bird bath cleaned out and leave it topped up with water. As I say, you can melt the ice on a cold day with some boiling water. If you haven't got a, if you haven't got a bird bath, just top up a plant source with water and leave that on your patio. I have a variety of bird feeders in my garden. I've got one which has got peanuts on one side and seeds in the other, which I fill up through the top. Little fat-filled coconut heart to feed the blue tits. A bird feeder on my window filled with sunflower hearts. This is great for robins and small birds to come in and feed from. The seed filters can be filled with wild bird seed or sunflower hearts, little ports on them for the birds to sit on to feed. And during the winter I use these fat ball feeders, high energy food for the blue tits and other birds to feed on. Just hang this onto my bird feeding station. And I've got a variety of different foods, seeds, peanuts, fat balls, and sunflower hearts. Thanks for joining me in my garden. I hope that's given you a few hints and tips and ideas for looking after plants and getting on with some jobs as we move from winter into spring. Whatever you're up to, have a really successful gardening year ahead and join me again here in my garden by checking out some more of the videos I've got at Adam's Gardening Guides on YouTube. Dozens and dozens of gardening videos, hopefully there to inspire you and give you some fresh ideas.